Dear students, uh, a very good morning. Let's start another topic. In fact, the second topic of performance management. We have just completed ABC. And now we are going towards another topic. Obviously, this topic is far more shorter than ABC, but either it is shorter or long, we have to study each and everything. The name of the topic is target cost. Name of the topic is target cost. Okay. Now, what do you mean by target cost? Let me explain that. Traditionally, 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 how do or traditionally how organizations they used to decide the selling prices? Traditionally, the selling price was equal to cost plus the desired profit, whatever they want that desired profit up to the company. So traditionally, companies, they used to follow cost plus pricing. Traditionally, they were following cost plus means the profit is equal to selling price. This is traditionally what they used to follow. A very important concept in this is when you are saying I'm going to charge the selling price according to my discretion. Because if the cost of manufacturing is $1.20, assuming, and company says we need at least a profit of $5, it means the selling price is $25. Assuming the cost of producing that one unit is assuming $30. And let's say, uh, let's say a company says we need a profit of $15 per unit. So selling price is 45. So traditionally, the company is the one who used to decide the selling price means how much they want to charge to the customer. Now the things have changed. Target costing says no, 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 no. You can't do that anymore. Sorry, sorry, you can't do that. Now you can always, you cannot do that, that it's up. It's not up to you how much you want to charge to the customer. Don't you think so? You have to consider one more factor. You're forgetting one factor. Whatever you want to charge to the customer. The question is, is customer is willing to pay you? Does customer will pay you what you are asking? What is the point of quoting $45 per unit when customer is not going to pay you? So now the things have changed. So very, I would say, modern concept, sophisticated concept, that is target costing. Wow. Target costing says, don't tell your customer this much, we will charge you. According to the target costing. First, you carry out the research, do the research, our research, and after that, decide after carrying out the research what customer is going to pay you what customer is going to pay you against your your product so first you try to decide what customer is going to pay you it means now the selling price will not be internally decided the selling price will have the external focus what a customer wants to pay us so logically, we'll take the selling price from the market. And from that selling price, so selling price we'll take from, we'll take the selling price from the market. Assuming the, after doing all the research, your organization, they have decided that customer is going to pay us, let's say $38. So this is the selling price which you have taken actually from the market. Because how can you, now you cannot ignore this thing, what your competitor is charging. You cannot ignore this factor, what customer is going to pay you. So you have taken the selling price from the market. 
Now, less the desired profit. Desired profit. What profit you need? Or you can say target profit. Obviously, there are ways to decide the target profit. Target profit could be a return on a sales percentage. For example, you say, okay, whatever is the selling price, I don't mind, but I need at least 20% of that as a profit. I'm just assuming. Let's assume the desired profit, target profit is $8. Just an assumption, okay? It means now the target cost is $30. So target cost is $1.30. How we are deciding the co target cost? First, we have taken the selling price from the market. And from that price, we have de deducted the desired profit. Obviously, you have to decide what profit do you need. It could be a percentage on return on, a, return on sales. It could be a return on investment. Let's say you have decided. I'm assuming it is 8. Target cost is 30. Now, it means that you have to now focus only on one thing, try to manufacture the product at $1.30. If you're providing services, try to provide the service, try to have the cost of services $1.30. So if you can achieve to manufacture the product at $1.30, so you will be able to achieve your target profit, desired profit. Because you cannot change the selling price. You cannot increase the selling price. Because already you have taken the selling price from the market. Now the entire focus will be on the target cost. The entire focus will be on the target cost. Now you have to just focus how we can produce, how we can manufacture the product at $1.30. So you have to now estimate the cost. That What do you think? We know the target is 30 but you have to estimate the cost. Estimated cost. Assuming the estimated cost is 34. Your company says right now, whatever the resources are available and by doing all the calculation, company says our estimated cost per unit is 34 minus the target cost. Target cost is 30. So this four is a cost gap. What is this four? Cost gap. Actually, we cannot increase the selling price. If you increase the selling price, customer will not be paying you. Now, company will have the entire focus on how to reduce this cost gap, how to eliminate this cost gap. Because company knows that in order to achieve desired profit, Target profit, they have to meet target cost. As soon as they are going to meet the target cost, the job is done. You cannot increase the selling price, but obviously you can focus on one thing, how to eliminate, how to reduce your cost gap. Obviously, there are a number of strategies. We are going to discuss each and everything. How do we reduce cost gap? For example, you might be thinking to switch to another supplier from where you can get the same material without compromising on quality at a lower price. There's another possibility. If you can identify to go for the less skilled labor, obviously less skilled labors, they are cheap. But again, without compromising on quality. Now you might be thinking, sir, if we are going for the less skilled labor, so it means we are going to compromise on quality. The answer is no. This is not the case always. There's a possibility when you are manufacturing a product, so each and every area of manufacturing might not be so technical. So if there is less technical areas where obviously it does not matter, <clears throat> that is company will have to decide, not you and me. If company, company has to decide. If they can replace a very skilled labor with a less skilled labor without compromising on quality, then go ahead. In that way, you can reduce the cost gap. There's another possibility. A uh, company might decide to, you know, change, uh, bring the change in the packaging. Because oh, what is the point of having a high packaging cost? So you might be thinking to change the packaging to reduce the cost gap. So what I want to say, in 
the target costing is totally different than what traditionally we used to have. So traditionally, the focus was not external. Traditionally, everything was internal. What is our manufacturing cost? What profit do we need? That's it. Selling price has decided. Now the things have changed. Target costing says, no, it will not happen now. Take the selling price from the market. Do carry out the research, then decide what customer is going to is willing to pay you. Then company will need to decide the target profit. How much profit do they need, let's say, per unit? Deduct that target profit from the selling price, which you have taken, selling price, which you have taken from the market. It will give you a target cost. Now, just focus only on one thing. How to manufacture that product at target cost. Let's say your estimated cost is 34, target cost is 30. The difference is cost gap. Now try to introduce strategies. Try to follow strategies. By following those strategies, you can reduce the cost gap. And the best is if you can eliminate that cost gap. So things have changed. So target costing, the focus is external. Traditionally, the focus was internal. Traditionally, we were not asking the customer how much you are willing to pay us. Traditionally, we were telling to the customer, this much we will charge you. Now the things have changed. So I hope I've given you a really, and let me tell you one more thing. Target costing is applicable in manufacturing environment as well as in service industry as well. Now let us discuss in detail this target cost. Target costing involves setting a target cost by subtracting a desired profit from a competitive market price. I think we did the same thing. We have taken 38, let's say, from the market. Then we deducted the target profit to get to decide target cost. Real world users include Sony is using this target costing. Toyota is using this target costing. Swiss watchmaker Swatch, they are also using target costing, okay? In fact, it is the opposite of conventional, conventional means traditional, cost plus pricing. Let's just see the example. Music matters, <clears throat> manufactures and sell vin uh, vinyl records for a number of popular artists. At present, it uses traditional cost plus pricing system. Cost plus pricing system, the cost of, of the record is established first. Assuming this is $1.14 per unit. And let's say they need profit $1.05 per unit each record. So this results, the current selling price is $1.90. Required profit is five, cost is this, selling price, this is traditionally. How are cost plus pricing ignores? So, please, you need to understand this. This can appear as, a, as disadvantages of cost plus pricing. This can appear as problems in, uh, I would say, cost plus pricing. So, cost plus pricing ignores the price that customers are willing to pay. Because in traditional way of uh, deciding the selling price, we were actually not asking customer. Pricing the records too high could result in a low sales volume and what? Obviously profits. The price charged by competitors for similar products. If competitors are charging less than $1.90 per record, for similar records, then customers may decide to buy their CDs from competitor companies. They will not come to you. Cost control. The cost of the record is established at $1.14. But there's little incentive to control this cost. You're not, obviously, why would we focus now how to reduce this $1.14? Because we know how do we decide the selling price. Target costing, wow. Target costing. 
Uh, definitely, I would say the target costing is the game changer. Target costing is the game changer, provided that you apply this properly. Music matters could address the problems discussed above through implementation of target costing. The first step is to establish a competitive market price. The company would consider how much customers are willing to pay and how much competitors are charging for similar products. And let's assume, let's assume, let's assume this is dollar 15 per unit so they have decided the selling price now music matters would then deduct their required profit from selling price the required profit may be may capped at dollar 5 per unit okay a target cost is arrived by deducting the required profit from the selling price we did the same thing. Selling price we have taken from the market. We have deducted the desired profit, target profit to get target cost. The cost gap then be identified. In this case, the current cost per unit is $1.14. Per unit must be reduced to the target cost dollar ten. So there is a cost gap of dollar four per unit. So now you have to focus how to close this cost gap. Steps must be taken. So in step number four, we calculate cost gap. Step one. The first step in the target costing is establish the competitive market price. Obviously, how will you establish the market competitive market price? Obviously, through research survey. So, target costing the first step. The first step is to establish competitive price. Step two: deduct required profit from the selling price. Step two: deduct required profit from the selling price step three get the target cost is arrived by deducting the required profit from the selling price step four identify the cost gap let me repeat the steps step one establish the selling price from the market step two you need to deduct you need to actually deduct the required profit from the selling price. You need to deduct the required profit from the selling price. And in step three, you will get the target cost. Step four, identify the cost gap. Step four, identify the cost gap. Cost gap is the difference between simply estimated cost minus the target cost. So in a step four, Four in step four. So step one is this. Step two is the decide the target profit. Step three, calculate target cost. Step four is to calculate target cost gap. Step five, now just focus only on one thing, how to reduce this cost gap, how to close this cost gap. Okay, these steps are why I'm putting so much emphasis on these steps. Because you you might have a question, multiple choice question and exam regarding him in steps as well. So please, you have a really good grip on steps. So first step is to establish competitive market price. Second, deduct their required profit from the selling price. So required profit may be kept, let's say dollar five. In step three, you get target cost four, cost gap five. Now, you will have to introduce the strategies to reduce this cost gap. So required profit. This is target cost and this is the selling price. So this is target cost, required profit, and then obviously selling price. Step used in driving a target cost in a manufacturing industry. Step one, 
our target price is set based on customer's perceived value of the product. This is there for a market-based price. So step one. Step one, we have simply taken the price from the market, then what customer is willing to pay us. Step two, required target operating profit per unit is then calculated. How much operating profit do you need? This may be based on either a return on sales or it could be return on investment. But the very important point is the required target profit you need to decide. Step two, decide the required target profit. Step three, the target cost is derived by subtracting the target profit from the target price. Step three, we get target cost. Step four, we get cost gap. Then, then is the last step. Techniques such as value analysis, we will discuss, don't worry. Value engineering or functional analysis can be used with an objective of reducing cost gap while satisfying customer needs. So students, please don't forget these five steps. One, to decide the target price, which you will take from the market. Then you need to decide the target profit. In step three, you will get the target cost. In step four, there will be a cost gap. In step five, now you have to apply the techniques, how to reduce this cost gap. In fact, how to eliminate this cost gap. It's just for a discussion. Otherwise, just stay till stay till step five. Negotiation with customer may take place before deciding whether to go ahead with the project or, or not. So there's a possibility uh, you might carry out the negotiation with the customers. Uh, for example, just an example, other than the manufacturing, uh, let's say we are a lawyer. We have decided, we have done each and every calculation, but obviously still, if we are unable to meet our target profit, there is a possibility before, let's say, providing uh, legal services to our customer. We Obviously, we are going to have a negotiation with the customer. But please, student, please, you people are just supposed to focus on these. Five steps in target costing. Step one, two, three, four, and five. Now, what are the strategies? How do we reduce cost gap? How do we close cost gap? Because company knows that. In order to earn the target profit, there's only one way. And the, the name of that one way is to manufacture. If you're a service company to provide services, at target cost. So if you can manufacture the product at target cost, only then you will be able to achieve the target profit. The target cost gap is established in a step four. Step four, student, don't forget these steps because you might have a multiple choice question even on steps. Step four of the target costing process, target cost gap. Estimated product cost minus target cost. So target cost gap is equal to estimated product cost minus target cost. It is the difference between what an organization thinks it can currently make a product, estimated product. And what it needs to make it for target cost in order to make a required profit. Alternative product designs should be examined for potential areas of cost reduction that will not com compromise the quality of the products. Question that manufacturing may ask in order to close the gap include. Can any materials be eliminated? For example, cut down on pack packing materials, but obviously uh, without compromising on quality. Obviously, if you're putting so much money, spending so much money on packing material, so that does not give any value to the customer. So if you can reduce the packing material, uh, obviously, <clears throat> so, but it should not be, you know, it at the same time, it should be appealing but obviously at a lower cost. Can a cheaper material 
be substituted without affecting what? Quality. That is important. You know, so, because if you compromise on quality, your product will not be, won't be able to sell. You will not be able to sell the product. Then what is the point of manufacturing the product at target cost? So can a cheaper material be substituted without affecting quality? Can labor savings be made without, what are we discussing? We are discussing the strategies to reduce the cost gap. We are discussing the strategies to reduce the cost gap. And in step number four, we, we get this cost gap. Can labor savings be made without compromising quality? For example, by using lower skilled workers, if it is possible, can productivity be improved? For example, by improving motivation. See, when your workers, they are working as an employee, things are different. When your workers, they are working, but they are at the same time, if they are motivated. So motivation makes the difference, to be very honest. If your staff is motivated, you can achieve anything. Your team is motivated. You can achieve anything. In fact, as an individual, you are motivated. You can achieve anything. You can beat anyone. But you have to be motivated. Because I, I personally believe, you know, when your motivation makes you work harder, motivation makes you work smarter, Actually, motivation keeps you alert. Actually, motivation gives you the, keeps your desire of success alive. Motivation keeps your desire of success alive. Everyone wants to be successful in this world. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, but if you just have a wish to become successful, you will not become successful. Sorry for that. There's only one way to be successful that you need to carry out actions to get the success. Obviously, nobody gets the success in day one. Actually, getting success means you have to carry out desired actions consistently. So if you're consistent, every day you will be little closer to your objective. But if you're not consistent, you will never reach to you, you will never reach to your at to your destiny. And in order to be consistent, you have to be motivated. So I hope now it is very clear that motivation is important. And there are so many factors they, they should keep, keep you motivated. For example, if someone is having financial troubles, so obviously to become, I would say, financially independent, in order to get the financial freedom, you, you have to be, work hard and smart. And you should be, this thing should motivate you that right now you're not financially, you don't have a financial freedom. But, you know, this thing should motivate you that you need to work hard so that this problem should be over in the next two to three years. But you have to work hard. Lazy attitude, careless attitude, not being consistent, uh, then sorry to say. Whatever problem right now you are facing, you will keep facing the same problems. They will not change. So whenever you need a different result, you need to do something different. Whenever you need a different result, you need to do something different. And let me tell you one last thing and then we are carrying on. In the entire world, in the entire world, there is only one individual. In the entire world, there is only one individual who actually keeps you not to be successful. In the entire world, there is only one individual who keeps you not to be successful, successful and that is you yourself. Because you need to decide. To become successful, you have to work hard. Then nobody can stop you. So if you are not working hard, it means you are the only one who is stopping 
himself or herself not to become successful. So I hope I have not wasted your time. It took a little bit of time to just give you a little idea about motivation. Can production volume be increased to achieve economies of a scale? Economies of a scale means your production cost per unit will be, average production cost per unit will be reduced. So can production volume be increased? Obviously, when volume increases, so definitely your, you will be able to achieve economies of scale. Economies of scale means your average manufacturing cost will reduce. Could cost saving be made by reviewing the supply chain? Like as I told you, uh, is it possible to change the supplier? So simply just review the supply chain. Is it possible to reduce the cost? Can part assembled components be bought to save an assembling time? Is this possible? There's a possible to part assemble means, let's say, is it possible to take, to buy components? They are semi-finished goods to convert them into finished goods to take the, to reduce the assembling time. So can part assemble components be bought into safe and on assembling time? Can the incidence of the cost drivers be reduced? Is it possible to reduce the causes to be in, due to which cost is incurred? Is there some degree of overlap between the product related fixed cost that could be eliminated by combining service department or resources? If there is any simply duplication of cost, <clears throat> if the same cost is incurred in two departments, let's say the production as well as in service. So if it is the case, so it is possible to eliminate that cost. Why we are discussing all these things, we are discussing the strategies through which we can reduce the cost gap. We can reduce the cost gap. So let's say there's one production department, there's a service department as well. Assuming if there's any common cost which can be reduced, which can be reduced. Just a very simple example. Assuming, let's assume that just to support the production department, there is one non-skilled labor. And service department, they have also kept the same worker to support them. So if there is, let's say there are two workers, in production department and there are two workers in service department and let's say or let's say there's one worker in production department and another worker is in service department things like that and both are working and both are doing the more or less a similar job so instead of having two workers is it possible to just just have one worker let's say uh just change the timings let's say one hour, one, one hour the person is at in the production department and then let's say same person is spends one hour or maybe a little bit less in the service department. So if you can reduce uh, the cost. Closing the cost gap by increasing the selling price is not a viable option. You can't do that. What is the first uh, steps of the target costing? We take the price from the market. How can you increase the price? So closing the cost gap by increasing selling price is not a viable option. As the price is determined by market forces rather than the company. A key aspect of this is to understand which features of the products are essential to customer. Perceive quality and which are not. This process is known as value analysis, which is explored in more detail. So we'll discuss that in more detail. Let's see a question on target costing. What is the target cost of the polymer used in the manufacture of printers? What is the target cost? What is the target cost of the polymer used in the manufacture of printer? B. Assuming that target 
costing principles are adopted, what is the maximum selling price that company C can charge per digital camera? Assuming that target costing principles are adopted, what is the maximum selling price that company C can be charged per digital camera? So let's read the scenario. Company C is currently considering expansion into a manufacturing to, to, to new products. So they are focusing on expansion into manufacturing to new products. A printer is one, digital camera is two. So company C is focusing on manufacturing two new products. One is printer. The second is digital camera. Okay. Company C normally uses a pricing policy of 10% markup on a standard prime cost on its product. Prime cost means major cost. Prime cost means direct cost. Let me first explain that. Actually, when we say markup, markup is a percentage of cost. Basically, markup we apply on cost. So markup is a percentage of cost. For example, cost plus profit is equal to selling price. Whenever examiner says markup, then your cost will be 100%. Assuming the markup is 20%, then logically your selling price will be 120%. So markup is a percentage of cost. Another concept, prime cost, actually prime cost means major cost. Prime cost means direct cost. More explanation of the prime cost. Prime cost means the cost of direct material. Prime cost means direct material cost. We know that direct material means which is easily traceable. Prime cost means direct labor cost. If there is a direct expense, so we take direct expense also. For example, when you are manufacturing something, but you need to pay the royalty as well. So direct expense. Example is royalty payment. Add all of them. So you will get prime cost. Another name for, for the prime cost is direct cost. So basically prime cost means direct cost. Prime cost means major cost. What actually comes in prime cost, direct material cost. We know that direct material means by looking at the product, which is easily traceable. Direct labor means those that are directly involved in the production process. Direct expense, which is not direct material, which is not direct labor, but still it is equally important. As I have given you examples, royalty payments. For example, to manufacture something, you have to pay the royalty payment. If this is the case, it is your direct expense and it will be a part of your prime cost. Another name for, for the prime cost is direct cost. Okay. Now, markup is a percentage of cost. So in markup, what happens? Cost is treated as 100%. Then we add profit. You will get selling price. So in markup, in case of markup, selling price will always be more than 100%. Now, there's another term which we use is margin. Margin is a percentage of selling price. So in case of margin, basically what happens, cost plus profit is equal to selling price. In case of margin, selling price will always be 100%. Now, assuming, assuming 
the profit margin is 20%, then your cost will be 80%. So markup, percentage of cost, margin, percentage of selling price. More explanation, assuming, assuming selling price is $1.20, Let's say examiner says markup is 20%. Part 8, required, calculate cost of the product. We know that markup means markup is a percentage of cost. In markup, your selling price will be more than 100%. Let's say markup is 20%, selling price they have given us 20 and they're asking us the cost. We know the equation, cost plus profit is equal to selling price and logically markup is 20%, so obviously the cost is 100% and your selling price is 120%. Now we need to calculate cost. We have been given a selling price, which is 120%, so very simple. Cost is equal to, the selling price is 20. I need to get this cost. So multiply by 100, divided by 120. Selling price 20 is actually representing 120%. And we need to find out 100%. So 20 multiplied by 100, divided by 120. Students, I'm getting 16.667. So this is the cost. Now let's say requirement B of the same question, assuming 20% is margin. We are assuming now 20% is not the marker. Assuming 20% is the margin. If the 20% is margin equation, we know that cost plus profit is equal to selling price. In case of margin, the selling price is 100%. Profit, we know that it is 20%, then cost is actually 80%. Now let's calculate the cost. Selling price is 20, which actually now represents 100%. Now we need cost, which is actually 80%. So 80 upon 100. 80 upon 100, so 20 multiplied by 80, then 100. I'm getting 16. So I hope now everyone should have a really, really good idea. How do we deal with the term markup? How do we deal with the term margin? You might be thinking, sir, we could have done this. Selling price is 20 less the margin. Obviously, you can do that. It's the same thing. Margin is 20%. If you take 20% of 20, you will get 4. So the cost is here. Obviously, it's up to you. But you cannot apply this 20% directly on selling price when markup is given. You can apply this 20% directly on the selling price if margin is given. Because margin is a percentage of selling price. Margin is a percentage of sales. But whenever markup is given, markup is a percentage of cost. So I strongly believe everyone is having a really good idea about the prime cost direct expense i've given you the example direct expense another for example i'm talking about royalty payment so if there's any royalty payment that work that is your direct expense now come back to the question this 10 person this 10 person is markup on standard prime cost. Now students, I believe you have a really good idea about this prime cost on its products. However, as both the printing and camera markets are highly competitive, the finance, when the markets are highly competitive, then you cannot dictate to the market how much we want to charge to the customer. 
in a highly competitive market, basically we take the price from the market that what exactly customer wants to pay us. But when we say what exactly customer wants to pay us, so obviously we'll focus on majority of the customer. The finance director is considering using a target costing approach, approach, but wants to retain the same markup. Markup will be 10%, but approach will be target costing, okay? Printers, one product. The maximum price the market will support is dollar two hundred. Printers, the maximum price which market can support it is dollar two hundred per unit of the new printer. Okay. Now, very important point is the maximum price the market will support is $200. They want to keep 10% markup. Just one thing. Cost plus profit is equal to selling price. Markup means the cost is 100%. Profit is 10%. It means your selling price is 110%. So if you want to keep that 10% markup and the selling price is 200, it means selling price is 200. Your target cost, if I find out 200, multiply by 100 upon 110. I'm getting 181.82. 181, I'm getting 181.82, okay? The maximum price that market will support is 200 per unit of the new printer. 60% of the direct cost, 60% of the direct cost, this is the direct cost. 60% of the direct cost of each printer is expected to be polymer. So whatever is the cost of your printer, they are saying 60% of the direct cost of each printer is expected to be polymer. So if you want to find out the cost of the polymer, if you want to find out the cost of polymer, just take 60% of that. If you want to find out the cost of polymer, that what will be the cost of polymer per printer? So the cost of polymer per printer is, if I take 60% of 181.82, take the 60% of that, I'm getting 109.092. So you can make it 109. Okay, we'll come back to this, don't worry. And then we'll solving it properly. They are asking what is the target cost of the polymer? Target cost of the polymer. So target cost of the polymer we have calculated it is 109. Assuming target costing principles are adopted, what is the maximum selling price company C can charge per digital camera? So let's first deal with A properly. A, A, A. Basically, we are doing tests to understanding six. Part A. We know that due to markup, cost plus profit is equal to selling price. Due to markup, your cost is 100%. Profit is 10% because they want to keep the 10% profit. So selling price is 110%. So logically, your target selling price, whatever the amount is, it is actually representing 110% because of the 10% markup. Okay. Now, the selling price examiner has given us, which is $200. Logically, this $200 is representing 110%. Now, what is the target cost?
टू हंड्रेड मल्टीप्लाई बाय हंड्रेड अपॉन वन टेन दिस इज वन एटी वन पॉइंट एट टू बट दिस इज अ टोटल टारगेट कॉस्ट एग्जामिनर इज आस यू टू कैलकुलेट द टारगेट कॉस्ट ऑफ पॉलीमर पर प्रिंटर एन एग्जामिनर से इट इज द कॉस्ट ऑफ द पॉलीमर इज सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल डायरेक्ट कॉस्ट सो सिंपली विल टेक सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ दैट सो पॉलीमर कॉस्ट वन एटी वन पॉइंट एट टू एंड देन आई टेक सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ दैट इट इज डॉलर वन जीरो नाइन पर प्रिंटर you can read the requirement again what they have actually asked what is the target cost of polymer used in the manufactures of printers done assuming their targets costing principles are adopted what is the maximum selling price that company c can charge per digital camera let's read digital cameras 40% of direct cost Forty percent of direct cost of each digital camera is expected to be software. So whatever is your direct cost, forty percent of that, whatever is your direct cost, forty percent of that is the cost of each digital camera. Expect. Each digit, uh, uh, each digital camera to be software. So forty percent of direct cost of each digital camera is expected to be software. So basically, forty percent of the direct cost of each digital camera is actually the cost of the software. So whatever is the direct cost of your digital camera, forty percent of that cost actually represents what software. the minimum price company c can source the software necessary to make one digital camera is currently 76 dollar so they have given us the price of software the minimum price company c can source the software necessary to make one digital camera is currently dollar 76 and we know that software is 40% of the direct cost we know that software is 40% of the direct cost and amount of that 40% is 76 so very easily we can calculate the total direct cost software cost is the 40% of total direct cost of each digital camera we know the amount of the 40% that is 76 so very easily we can calculate the cost of one digital camera okay how will you calculate basically 40% cost is dollar 76 all you need is just bring that 40% cost at 100% cost because 40% of the direct cost of each digital camera is software so we know this software cost look at this simple maths 76 multiplied by 100 upon 40 will give you the total direct cost so 76 multiplied by 100 divided by 40 i'm getting 190 so basically Direct cost of each digital camera is one ninety. Direct cost of each digital camera is one ninety. On this basis, company C has determined that the cost gap between the budgeted cost per digital camera and target cost. Per digital camera is twenty three point seven zero. Okay. Now let me tell you. They have given us the cost gap, which is twenty three point seven. Now, first of all, cost gap is actually equal to cost 
कॉज गैप इज इक्वल टू करंट एस्टिमेटेड कॉस्ट माइनस द टारगेट कॉस्ट देव गिवन एस द कॉज गैप विच इज ट्वेंटी थ्री पॉइंट सेवन जीरो एस्टिमेटेड कॉस्ट वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड वन नाइनटी माइनस द टारगेट कॉस्ट विच वी डोंट नो सो वेरी इजली वी कैन कैलकुलेट दैट target cost is equal to 190 minus the cost gap minus the cost gap will give us target cost so basically the target cost is 190 minus 23.70 i'm getting 166.30 so first we have calculated the estimated cost from the estimated cost we have just deducted the cost gap now we have the target cost okay but this is not the final answer we have been asked to calculate the maximum price and company still wants to keep 10% markup policy and we know that markup is a percentage of cost cost plus price profit is equal to selling price Markup means cost is hundred percent. Add the profit ten percent, which company wants to keep. So the selling price is one hundred and ten percent. So this target cost is logically representing hundred percent. So let's decide the selling price. What should be the selling price per digital camera? One sixty six point three zero. One hundred and ten upon hundred. So one sixty six point three multiplied by one ten upon hundred. Students, I'm getting one eighty two point nine three. So basically, the target selling price is one eighty two point nine three. The target selling price is one eighty two point nine three. Come back. Part A is done. B is done. Great. Now, what are the benefits of target costing? Obviously, we we will not be examine this in section C, but uh, it can appear in section B as well as in A. Benefits to adopting a target costing approach include approach include. it focuses on what customers are prepared to pay external focus for a product and establishes the cost budgets based on an expected selling price so basically the entire focus is on what customer is going to pay us but if you ask me so customer is actually willing to pay you nothing but that is not possible customer has to pay something otherwise company will not uh, give the product it is more likely that only features that customers value will be incorporated into the design of the product so obviously why would we keep a feature of a product which increases the cost but customer is not willing to pay us for example if you are spending so much on packaging packaging will not change features of your product packaging will not increase the usage efficiency of your product so why to spend money on those features there uh, to whom customer is not giving any value cost control will be considered earlier in the process managers can consider ways to reduce the cost gap at the design stage so cost control will be very early 